from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's the Cube covering VTUG Winter Warmer 2019. Brought to you by Silicon Angle Media. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube worldwide leader in live tech coverage. We're on the ground here at the VTUG Winter Warmer, and it is 2019. It's actually the 13th year of this event. It was one of the original, if not the original, VMware user groups. Covers virtualization, cloud computing, and even more. Uh, always great to be able to give back to the community, get some good interviews, and no better person to help me start with my first interview at a show of the year, but good friend of the program, Keith Townsend. He is the CTO advisor, and he is also now a solutions architect with VMware. Keith, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on the queue. Yeah, so Keith, I mean, you were host of our program for a number of years. You're now, you know, back working on the vendor side. Uh, but, uh, you, know, th you know, this community, you know, what I, I always say in my career, there are certain communities and ecosystem where there's just, you love to be a part of it. And the virtualization group, you know, I've been part of it for a long time. You know, VMware and beyond though, you know, it's people that, you know, they get excited and they geek out on the technology and they love to share. And that's why we come to events like this. Yeah, it is um, amazing just, you know, the every every show is getting smaller, with, maybe with the exception of AWS <laughs> reInvent, but I, I don't think the intensity has shrunk at all. You get around friends, you know, we were just at a desk and uh, 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 one of the attendees asked, how do I get a job doing X? And the community was like, oh, you just talked to the people at this table. So yeah. it, it is, a, it is a, a great, great community. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, you, you talk about, you know, we've seen the huge growth in meetups, in user groups, in regional shows. Uh, you know, VMware does VMworld, but the VMworld, VMware forums around the globe, I'm sure oh, you probably yep. have to go to a few, a few of those. They've been doing well. I remember back in my EMC days, EMC did uh, a number of those. So we see, yeah, Amazon reInvent is growing, but oh my God, their regional shows are ridiculous. I, I've said some of those regional shows, I either different communities or different localities can actually be even better than s some of the big shows. Uh, and you know, we love Keith. We're, we're happy to welcome you here to the home of the AFC Championship, New England Patriots. You all, uh, first off, congratulations. The uh, you know we we went a little back and forth. I'm a huge Bears fan, and I say, you know what, Tom Brady won't play play forever, so enjoy it. it this is an amazing backdrop. Stu, I'm a little offended that you've not involved, invited me to a VTUG before now. Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry, Keith. It's, it's a community <laughs> thing. I absolutely should have come. Um, it, absolutely, I've ha had friends. Most of them, it is local. I'm talking to users from right. Maine and Massachusetts, Rhode Island and Connecticut and the like. Um, so you gave a keynote this morning right. and you did in true fashion. You did a blog post uh, about IT reality check leading in and I thought it was a great way for us to start is you know, there's so much change in the industry. Uh, those of us that are technologists say, you know, we're super excited because there's so much new stuff. Uh, it's not like, oh geez, you know, 2019 is probably going to be just like 2018. It's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what did I do in 2018? What do I have to change? How do I keep up? How do I manage it? Uh, I'd love to get your viewpoint, you know, wh what's going on with Keith, and you're talking to a lot of users, so, you know, help, help share, you know, what is the reality check that everybody's going you through. You know, we're today. talking about it pre-recording in the banter, just, you know, whether it's, you know, VMware with HipDale and all the stuff that Casey, Kelsey Hightower is doing out with Kubernetes, then as you spin, spin out to serverless, uh, infrastructure's cold, uh, scripting, et cetera. There's so much to learn that you're a bit overwhelmed. And we're seeing this out as, you know, as I'm talking to executives, CTOs, CIOs, VP of infrastructure, they're feeling the same kind of excitement and at the same time, overwhelmness. Like what, what's, what's real? You know, we, we had the big cloud movement sort of a few years ago where I think we we're at the hype cycle where organizations are starting to understand that, you know, cloud isn't the destination, it's part of a strategy. And everyone seems to be in the throes of figuring out what that means for us. We're just on the uh, crowd chat, talking about multi-cloud and the drivers around multi-cloud. You guys did a great job of hosting that cloud chat. And I think we saw the gambit of where people are, you know, 
it, there's not really a business rationale to people who are re really in the throes of trying to figure it out. Yeah, I, actually, I'd love to comment. A friend of ours uh, uh, that we, we've had on the program before, Bobby Allen from Cloud Genera, said when he's working with companies, if they ask for a three-year strategy plan, <laughs> he said, I will not do it unless we guarantee that we will go revisit it every six months. Because I, I look back, you know, Clay Christensen, uh, you know, w when he talks about strategy, is strategy is a point in time thing, right. not something that you write it in stone. Uh, I've been saying for a couple of years, cloud strategies at companies today is it, they wrote it in ink and the ink's still drying, and uh, you know, you're probably going to need to, you know, go through it and change it because it is changing fast and therefore, you know, huge challenge. I started to deploy something, oh wait, what about the next thing, or there's some new practice or something to do it. So it is challenging because I need to run my business today, I got to set my budget for the year usually, um, and it's, I need to be agile, but you know, I can't constantly be tearing everything up and you're not going to be throwing it out or retraining and skills, I mean, there's so many challenges there. So Stu, you might admit, remember when, when I was on the other side of the, the table, I, uh, it was meant at somewhat of a dig that VMware moves at the speed of the CIO. And uh, it was picked up as more of a compliment, but it was a dig. I, I'll, I'll be honest that it was a dig. And uh, what I've learned the past few months is that VMware has to move at the speed of the CIO. It's no longer, and it's not just VMware. Every, the community has, and the CIO is faced with that. We could do, a few years ago, a cloud strategy and that thing could sit on the desk for a year and it would still be valid. But to Bobby's point, if you're going to do a strategy, a three-year strategy, you got to revisit that every six months. And this agility that we're not accustomed to uh, previously in the industry, we, we have to now become super agile and figure out how do we keep the lights on and innovate at the pace that the business needs, which is pretty good challenge. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's a true. We're at the beginning of the year. Uh, I, I made a comment uh, personally and said, you know, I'm not a big believer in uh, you know s setting you know resolutions. More, you know, let's set goals. You right. know, you're a runner, uh, I do some biking, and it's like, okay, you know, I've got a big race I want to do this year, I'm going to work myself you know, towards that goal and raise some money. You've got a certain target and something that you can do over the year, it's, uh, and, and there's a way that you do that. Companies, you know, they've got goals that they need to accomplish out yep. of business, and it's great to say, oh, well, we need to be more efficient, we need to do some down, something different, but, you know, reality is, you know, it's not just digital transformation or modernizing, it was, you know, oh, okay, do I need to transform my backup? You know, data protection, you know, huge activity going on in the marketplace right now. Well, well, you know, so much. 760 million in investment in one week? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, the wave of hyperconvergence is one uh, that really changed a lot of architectures and had people uh, change. Uh, you know, we've talked cloud computing uh, there. What are some of the, you know, some of the big, uh, you know, movements that you see, you know, we used to track in the industry, it was kind of the, the Intel refresh right. cycle, and you know, oh well, it's the next version of Microsoft, or you know, VMware operating system would be one of those big, you know, kind of TikToks of, of IT. What, what are some of the big commonalities that you're seeing out so, there that are actually moving people to new things? Without a doubt, there is one conversation that customers cannot get enough of, and I had uh, on my little vlog, I had uh, Yang Bing from VMware, SVP of the storage and business availability unit. And I challenged her on the VMware vision around this, but customers cannot get enough of having a conversation around data. And what, they, what do they do with data and how do they move data? How do they get compute closest to data? How do they get data the closest to the resources? We talked about it on the multi-cloud conversation but uh, by far, conversations are around how do they extract value from the data, how do they protect data, and how do they make sure they're compliant with the data is something that, that's driving a lot of innovation, a lot of conversation, a lot of interest. Yeah, Keith, it, it's a great one. When I look at you know, our research team at Wikibon, data is at the center of everything. In many ways, the failings of big data was talking about you know the challenges I have with infrastructure and oh the growth and the variety and blah 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 and everything. That's not what important to the business. They don't care about you know it's like oh well there's a storage problem and a network problem. It's the business says there's data, you know 
do I protect my business to make sure that I'm not at risk? You know, all the things like GDPR are coming. And can I leverage value? Do I, can I get new lines of business? Can I generate revenue out of that? Um, and I've seen early signs that we've learned this whole, you know, AI ML movement, you know, data really at the center. Um, right. We've seen, you know, storage. We went from talking about storing data to about, you know, that data ecosystem. Um, and even edge computing and IoT, data, where data needs to be, how I work it, uh, absolutely a center. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to hear that customers are identifying that. Uh, we've been doing like chief data officer events for many years. You know, where does data live? If Is that a CIO thing? Is that a different part of the business? I don't know if, if you've got anything you're seeing from, uh, you know, your customers as to who owns the data initiatives. So, it's really interesting. I had a conversation with a major bank uh, in, it was a one-on-one -on -one with the CDO, and what I thought was the most interesting part of the conversation is that he, re not only does he report directly into the CIO, which you know is to be expected, but he meets regularly with the board of directors. So data, we're seeing, I'm seeing these CDO roles being popped up, <laughs> and it's not just about the technology as you mentioned. It's about a whole approach about this asset that we have is so critical that we're uh, creating a C-level position that today might report into the CIO, but is most definitely accountable to the board of directors. Well, well yeah, and uh, Keith, it's the, the trend uh, we've been watching for a while is it used to be IT was a cost center and you know, it was kind of, you know, that's what it was considered. Today, if IT isn't in, you know, direct relationship working with the business, the business will go find somebody else to do it. The, the whole stealth IT movement, uh, you know, I can go find an answer uh, for what I'm doing. I think about projects I've worked on in my career and been like, oh, I wish it was as easy, you know, 15 years ago as right. it was today to do those. But we see security as a board level discussion. Data as a board level discussion is excellent. And all of those things that traditionally you would think that IT owned them, having awareness and visibility and information communication flow uh, between the board and the C-suite is, is, is great progress. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I was a big proponent of this prior to coming on the vendor side is that vendors have to start having conversations outside of IT. So traditional infrastructure vendors, Cisco, <laughs> I'm sorry, Microsoft, VMware, the whole, the Dell EMC, Dell Technologies, they have to skill up and have conversations with CMOs, uh, CDOs, COOs, HR directors, because they, th these buying centers now have power to go out and buy solutions. You know, I talked about in my uh, uh, keynote this morning, you know, how many people have Workday, how many people have Salesforce uh, applications that had nothing to do, and IT had no nothing to do with the procurement of of these solutions. Uh, the the ball is moving outside of just traditional IT court. Court technology is starting to get to the point where regular users can consume, business users can consume these massive, massive solutions based on technology, and just happens to be a label of a technology, whether it's Salesforce or Workday. All right, yeah, so Keith, I, on this, this whole point there, want to ask you, in my career, there's often been uh, groups inside a business that didn't get along, and we, you know, built silos. You know, the storage and the network team don't get along. Cloud and traditional IT, and, you know, we're, 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 we're fighting. You know, who owns it? Turf wars, managing that, um, you know, have we built silos in multi-cloud uh, today? Um, is everybody holding hands and you know, pointing the business moment. in the same direction? Yeah, kind of give us the, the good and the bad so and what we need to work on uh, going forward. I think the good is that you know, the, the umbrella of infrastructure is starting to work as a single uh, unit. So you have storage, compute, networking, uh, even uh, configuration management, groups that were kind of confrontational before and territorial, those groups are starting to come under one senior manager or one senior executive, looking at how do you provide services as a group and providing those services. I think where we're starting to see silos is actually the developer versus the infrastructure group, is developers just want an API to a set of services. They want infrastructure to get out of the way. Developers themselves haven't, you know, kind of gotten enough of the 
scars from having to have to do operations. And so there's a different view of the world. And uh, today, I think developers haven't yet gotten the, the budget power of operations, but the business wants solutions. And they're going out and they're, they're competing with traditional IT to get the dollars to run these services in the cloud or, or wherever, however they consume them. Whether it's, you know, I just saw Chick-fil-A deploying 2,000 endpoints at, uh, uh, to run 6,000 containers at the edge. Is that a, something that's run by IT or is that something run, run by developers? I don't know Chick-fil-A well enough to know, but this is what we're seeing in the industry. Yeah, all right, well, Keith Townsend, always a pleasure to catch up with you. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to check him out, CTO Advisor, on Twitter. Check out his blog, and of course, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back, uh, lots more coverage here at VTUG Winter Warmer 2019. Thanks for watching theCUBE.